Hello everybody and welcome to episode number one in the Let's Build Shadowgate series. Let's Build Shadowgate is based around a Nintendo game that was released in 1989 called Shadowgate. It was probably at the time my, my favorite game and it remains one of my favorite games to this day. And I thought it would be kind of neat to do an Alice project where we rebuild Shadowgate. Now, I've had this idea for a while, but one of the reasons I haven't really gone too far with this series yet was the Alice Tutorial series. I wanted to make sure that we covered enough content in the Alice Tutorial series on this channel so that we could build Shadowgate without introducing a whole lot of new skills. Rather, take a lot of the skills that you've learned in the Alice Tutorial series and apply them to making some kind of larger game or larger project. This series will take you through the building of a kind of a prototype Shadowgate. Now, the original Shadowgate probably used 60 screens, maybe even more, across kind of a point-and-click adventure. And I'm not ambitious enough to try and recreate that entire game. I mean, a lot of video games take months and months, if not years, to develop. And we're going to be making a, a smaller game here that hopefully you can make over the course of, at most, several hours. But... The most important thing is we'll be highlighting some of the concepts you can use to make your own point-and-click adventure game. So if it's not Shadowgate, it can be whatever game you imagine. Uh, Let's Build Shadowgate is kind of the beginning of some of the series that I've been thinking of. I, I want to recreate games like Final Fantasy and you know some of the other popular games in Alice. So after we're done with Shadowgate, we'll probably move into some other Nintendo games that we can remake in Alice. So, if some of these concepts are foreign to you, particularly something like mouse tracking, you want to go back to the Alice tutorial series on this channel and pick up the skills you need to make a, a game there. But we'll go ahead and get started with episode one of the Let's Build Shadowgate series now. Okay, before we head on into Alice, let's take a look at the 1989 version of Shadowgate. This was a Nintendo game that was released when I was nine years old. And it was probably one of my favorite games of all time. I had a ton of fun with this game. And what I like about it now is it, it's very minimal. The graphics aren't amazing, there's not a lot of animation, but there's really a lot of thought that goes into this game. And it's, I don't know, it's not the original point-and-click adventure, but to me, it was my introduction to the point-and-click adventure game. So it's, I'm kind of fond of this game. For those of you who know of Shadowgate or have played it before and, and think that it was a pretty fun game, about two months ago on Steam, there was a remake of Shadowgate released that updated the graphics and has some really fantastic uh, new updated graphics while keeping the gameplay in large part the same as kind of a point-and-click adventure game. So if you like Shadowgate and you haven't checked that out, it was definitely worth the 10 or $15 that I paid for it. And like I said, you can download that on Steam. But on the screen here, you see what we're going to attempt to remake in Alice. Now we're certainly gonna strip some of the features and we're gonna change it so that it fits our needs and fits the capabilities of Alice. But I wanted to make sure that everyone had a visual of what the original game was like. A majority of the game takes part or takes place on the top left hand side of the screen where right now you can see the hallway with the doors and and stuff like that think of this like you would Alice billboards in Alice we can create or download billboards that are much higher resolution than what you're seeing on the screen right here from like the Nintendo game and using the mouse tracking concepts that we talked about in lesson, I think it was lesson 20, uh, right around there in the Alice tutorial series, by using these mouse tracking concepts, we can create a single billboard to represent what the player sees and tell what region of the screen is being clicked on. If you're watching the screen right now, you can see the door has been opened by clicking on the door. When you clicked open on the skull, the skull moved. So this program intelligently knows where the cursor is on the screen. The original Nintendo didn't have a mouse, so 
Uh, I was using my arrow keys to move the mouse cursor around the screen. But because Alice has the ability to track a mouse, we're going to replace the keyboard movements with Alice mouse tracking and allow our users to click on the objects that they want. I haven't quite decided how advanced we're going to make this, but this is the vein of the game that we're going to be making. Our goal is to probably just, we want to create maybe two or three screens. It's kind of difficult to create a point and click adventure game in Alice, but it's certainly doable. Starting out at that front door, you want to be able to click on the door and you want to be able to open the door. And then we have to let the program know whether or not the door has been opened. Because if you click on it and it's closed, we want the door to open. But if you click on the door when it's already open, you want to go through the door. So these are the kinds of things we need to be thinking about when we are reverse engineering a game like Shadowgate. So hopefully you've got an idea of what Shadowgate is like and how the user interface works and all that good stuff by watching kind of this little demo running in the background as I talked about it. So let's uh, head over to Alice and see how are we going to make a game like Shadowgate. And actually, one last bit of business before we head over to Alice. I wanted to show you some screen captures I took of Alice while kind of playing on the Nintendo emulator. These are available as a download, and I've got the link down in the description so that you can use these billboards along with the tutorial. Um, I've got the first door uh, both open and closed. So you can see I've got like the open and closed version of this door. I've got the second screen, and again, I have a closed and open version of the door. And finally, I took a screen capture of a screen that's much further into the game, but uh, it's a screen that's got a banshee kind of coming out of a coffin, and that's going to be a third screen in our game. I also took a screen capture of the Shadowgate title screen, and then just a couple images, uh, PNGs, a you win and you lose that we'll be using as the end of our, our version of Shadowgate, as well as this picture of a sword that I plan on using in this tutorial as well. So... If you want to follow along exactly with this tutorial, just go ahead and download the graphic pack that you find down in the description below because I'll be importing these guys as billboards as the tutorial progresses. And I'm going to assume that you have all of them. Now, if you don't download that, you can simply take your own screen captures if you have access to Shadowgate and maybe a Nintendo emulator. But go ahead and download this graphics pack because you're going to need it as you follow along. And when all is said and done in this Let's Build Shadowgate tutorial, this is the final product that you're going to be looking at. So I have a start screen here similar to what you would see on the Nintendo. Now I haven't added any kind of background music. I've added a few sound effects. But it's set up so that the user has to press space to start the game. And they'll be set up uh, kind of the same start screen that you would be in Shadowgate. Now, I didn't program in any sort of fancy get a magic key to open the door. Right now, it's just set up so that if you click on the door once, the door will open. And if you click on the door while it's open, it will take you into the first hallway. Now, in the first hallway, you'll see I've added a sword here. It looks a little bit out of place. But for now, we're going to ignore the sword and just open up the door into the third screen. And it works a lot like the first door where you click on it once and it opens, and if you click on it a second time, you enter the room. Now this is going to be the boss of our game right here, this banshee, but you'll notice that I didn't pick up the sword. If I click on the banshee now, I'm greeted with a you lose message. Now if I start the game again, enter the front door, and this time I choose to pick up the sword rather than leave it here, The game now knows that the sword is in my inventory, and I kind of use the good screen a little bit differently than they did in Shadowgate, but the game is aware that I have the sword now, and when I go to fight the Banshee and click on the Banshee, I instead get a you win message. So that's the premise of the game right there. Now, Is it as advanced as, advanced as Shadowgate? Of course it's not. Making a true point-and-click adventure game with dozens upon dozens of screens can be an endeavor that takes months and months to do. Making larger games can certainly take some time, so we're trying to 
conceptually get a game going here that would allow you to build your own larger games, but I want it to be something that will again, be able to be developed in several hours instead of several days. So if you follow along with the Let's Build Shadowgate series, when you're done, you will have a game like what you just saw on the screen right there, and you'll have the skills to build your own much larger games with bigger inventories, you know, more thoughtful puzzles, and really just a lot more going on. So that's going to wrap up video number one in the Let's Build Shadowgate series. I know we didn't do any programming, but I want to make sure that everyone knows what they're getting into if they choose to follow along with this series. Over the coming videos, we'll build this program bit by bit and piece by piece, starting from a fresh Alice world. So I hope you'll join me as we build Shadowgate. As always, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments, and I will certainly help you out any way that I can. I do apologize that there wasn't a lot of programming in this first video, but uh, we will definitely get to that in video number two. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day!